You may not have heard about him a year ago, but Basiru Diomaye Faye is set to become Senegal's next president. The former tax collector who was released from prison a week before elections is destined to be Africa's youngest democratically elected leader at the age of 44. He was backed by a mentor and main opposition figure, Usman Sonko, who was barred from the race. Now, the surprise win in one of Africa's most stable democracies was largely driven by young voters hungry for change. Faye has promised to tackle corruption and bring reforms to Senegal's economy and its currency. But he also faces a series of major challenges. We'll get some analysis in a moment after this. His supporters call him Mr. Clean. That's because President-elect Basuro Diomaye Faye is promising a new Senegal. The Senegalese people have chosen to break with the past. I pledge to govern with humility and transparency and to fight corruption at all levels. I pledge to devote myself fully to rebuilding our institutions and strengthening the foundations of our way of life together. Faye is not a well-known political figure and only entered the leadership race as a substitute for his mentor Usman Sonko, a long-standing opposition force in the country who was disqualified from the election. Released from jail himself less than two weeks before the vote, 44-year-old Faye is now set to become Senegal's youngest president, riding on the back of Sanko's young supporters. You will see a different face of the Senegalese people and of Senegal because it's a total revolution. Everything is going to change behaviorally, socially and financially. Everything is going to change. Faye appealed to jobless voters struggling under the weight of high unemployment. He also rallied support under a populist pan-African platform. That included promises of economic independence and a new currency not pegged to the euro. But Senegal will also start producing oil and gas this year, which could mean new international partnerships. Senegal will always hold its ground and remain a friendly country and a reliable ally to any partner who engages with us in virtuous, respectful and mutually productive cooperation. The run-up to this election was filled with fears of democratic backsliding. Faye now faces the challenge of inspiring confidence on all levels. Experts say Senegal will need sweeping reforms if it's to move forward. There is a need for grand legislative reform that is going to probably devolve the presidential power uh, in the country. And then to also fight corruption, which I think has been the bane of development in this country. Now it's time to see if Faye, a young and unexpected leader, can really lead Senegal into a new chapter. For more on this, let's bring in Bosso Tal. She's a journalist and political analyst. Hello, Bosso. Thanks very much for your time. We heard there in our report that President is being described, or should I say President-elect is being described as Mr. Clean. How would you describe him? Well, Mr. Clean means that he is coming with not much wealth. He's coming with just a few assets and uh, a lot of debt, personal debts that he is still paying. Uh, that, that lets you know a little bit about uh, his financial background and also the fact that he's coming from a very humble family. That's why people call him Mr. Clean. Also calling him Mr. Clean because he's chosen, he's handpicked by, Basil, by uh, Mr. Usman Sonko, uh, who, is, uh, who has the reputation mm. of having zero fault while he was working as a tax uh, inspector at the, at the uh, Ministry of, um, of um, Finances. Okay. And so that makes him, yeah, that, that makes, makes him, him call Mr. Clean. That makes him Mr. Clean. <laughs> Only time will tell how yeah. clean he is. I mean, he comes yeah. with a lot of promises, exactly. including weeding out corruption, creating more jobs, and even wants to introduce a new currency instead of using the CFA franc inherited from the colonial era. But with little leadership experience, can he deliver on such promises? 
Well, you know, uh, I think people expect him to be that change, to bring the change as a leader, because all those who preceded him from 1960 to 2024 are people who found a system here and who followed through the system, which is something he's trying to change. Uh, so when we call a change in the system, it means not only um, uh, e e economically speaking, but also an entire institution concept that he has to change. Economically, he's calling for a reform for the CFA, which is the currency that we have in Senegal and across West Africa in some countries. The idea is not to break from everything that's been in place, but it is to see how best ways he can reform it mm -hmm. and see how those elements that he's going to bring in place are going to impact better and more in the long term the Senegalese people and the region. How much experience does he have to effect some of the huh? changes and deliver some of the promises he's, he's made? I think he has much more ambition than he has experience. OK, uh, he's a young president, the youngest ever elected in Africa, one of the youngest in West Africa. Uh, but he has the ambition and he's backed up by strong people, including Usman Sonko, who is at the root of, you know, uh, this entire uh, passive project, if I can call it that way. And also um, being young doesn't necessarily mean not wanting to change and finding the means to change it. How is it going to follow through? Like you mentioned earlier, time will tell. What I do know for sure, and what's been displayed, is that people are expecting him to do right when in face of um, opportunities that Senegal will get, including gas and oil, go anti-corruption, uh, and just be sure that whatever wealth comes in Senegal stays in Senegal for the benefit of Senegalese people. Mm. But in terms of experience, he doesn't have much political experience. He did not even want to be a politician to begin with. Right. And he said right. it himself. At a time when Senegal's democracy is being put to the test, right, what does this election result mean for the future of democracy in Senegal? What we're seeing is just a country that's still standing. When we look at the AOS, you know, uh, Burkina, Niger and, uh, and uh, Mali, all of them have young, young presidents, but all of them came through military coups. Senegal almost came or experienced a military coup, but thanks to the Constitutional Council, which stood by the rule of law, that kind of changed the, the paradigm that we have in the sub-region. Mm. So, so far, no matter what Senegal experienced since 2021, some people push it all the way to, 2020, oh, to 2012 when Macky Sall came to power, but let's just limit it to the turmoil that began in 21. From that moment to today, what we have is that Senegal is resilient. Senegal has been able to stand up and keep up with the process of voting. Mm, and right. that is something to highlight in, the, in, the, in West Africa. So knowing all of this, what role could Sonko have in a fire government? Well, you know, plan A was Usman Sonko. People were expecting and hoping that he would be out of jail and still eligible for a very long time. Uh, Basiru Jomaifei is plan B, and that plan B is handpicked by Usman Soko himself. Um, how much power is he going to have? People expect him to be a very wise counsel to Usman, to Basiru Jomaifei. Also, uh, just play the role of support because Jomai is new into politics. Uh, when I say new into politics, it mean, means that he was not planning in his life to become a politician, let alone a president in his life. And so Soko is going to play a role that we have yet to see in the near future. The government is being formed. Is he going to play a role in the government? We don't know yet. What we do know for sure is that today, uh, Basiru Jomai Fai has resigned from PASTEF just so that he could symbolically represent an entire nation. Mm. That is something that we've never experienced before. When we look at uh, uh, um, uh, Macky Sall, when we look at Abdullah Wad, he also had, and he founded actually, Sopi, who is, uh, which was the, um, his party. So here we have third transition, two, candid, two presidents, uh, past presidents who belonged to a party, who worked for a party. And here we have one who is saying, I'm going to be humble. I'm going to represent an entire nation and I'm going to work towards healing an entire nation's heart. Okay. whether inside Senegal or in the diasporas. So what role is Sonko is going to have in that? People expect him to stand.
Okay. By so by July five. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Tao, political analyst in Senegal. Thank you.